Hi guys, it's Claire. I'm back with um, video number two, or part two. This is making the second card that I promised you. Um, so we're still using the Botanicals Border um, die from Apple Blossom. And I've gone ahead there and pre-cut four of those die cuts out um, using navy blue cardstock again. And I'm just going to set them aside just for one minute. I grab myself my card base and bone fold that like we always do. And with this card, I want to do something a bit different. I actually want to make like a wreath on the front of it. So I'm going to draw around my double-sided tape that's just on my desk there and um, just draw a sort of light pencil line for me to follow around. Now to get all the leaves on my wreath, I'm going to cut into these die cuts. So I snip away where all the leaves are touching each other and the, the flowers are touching and just sort of break it down basically, sort of disassemble what's there and just make individual leaves out of what you've got. Now it's not that tricky to be honest, they come away with just a few snips of the scissors and you end up with quite a pile of leaves and, and flowers from each die. As you can see, I'm just doing a couple of little snips there. You can take your time, obviously, to neaten these up a lot. But for this card, you really don't need to worry too much. You just want that foliage, just so, you know, a mixture of leaves and, and different shapes. So I do this for this die cut and then for the following three as well. And I'll speed you up through that part. And you could take your time and actually get more from here than what I did. I just done sort of the big ones that jump out. Um, but there's actually more little flowers in there that you could take your time and cut out if you wanted to as well. Okay, so that's my first one done. And as I said, I'm, I'm happy I've got, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight leaves from that one die. But as I say, you could have probably cut into it a little bit more and got a few out. But I go ahead and do exactly the same. I've sped you up, as you can see, um, to the other three die cuts. And I end up with quite a, a pile of leaves. And uh, are they flower heads? Those little sort of spiky ones to use for my wreath. When I've got all the cutting done, I'm going to start to lay them around that circle. Now I fiddle with this quite a bit until I'm happy with you know, the placement and happy with how it looks. I do deliberately leave a, a white space at the bottom. I know that I'm going to put something else there, so I leave that bit, that bit free. And I, as I say, I just fiddle and play around with this for a while until I figure out sort of where they're going to go. It's looking a little bit messy here, but in a minute you'll see. I decide just to go ahead and start um, and lay the glue down. It's actually easier if you put your glue down and stick these into place as you work your way around, and they all don't move every time you put another one down. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough leaves, obviously, to go around the circle. So here you can see I'm popping my glue down just um, a few centimetres of glue along that line at a time and then sticking the leaves down. Again, it still it doesn't look very neat yet, um, but it does, by the time we've built everything up and added everything to this card, it, it's fine. So I get those sort of fern type leaves down first, and then I pop these little spiky, spiky ones down, all sort of facing inwards just to frame that, that circle in the middle. Okay, then I go back to the piece of gold cardstock that I've got. Now, if you just watched video number one, you'll see that I just made this cardstock, um, or this gold cardstock, um, with heat embossing. So I used some nice gold embossing powder on there to make a lovely gold piece of card. And I'm just using up the remaining piece of that and punching out, using the uh, stamping up, I think it's Petite Petals Punch, just punching out as many flowers as I can. And again, just popping them onto my foam mat and using my ball tool to give them some shape. And then I'm just going to stick those around the outside of the wreath. And 
give them a good push down and then leave those all to dry for a while while I go on to the next part. Now I know at the bottom of that reef I've left that space there and I wanted to make a bow. Well I wasn't sure if to add an actual ribbon bow or to make a bow and I decided to make a bow. This is the Stamping Up Bow Builder Punch and to make the bow, if you haven't seen this before, you have to punch out twice, all the little parts, punch it out twice. And now what I'm doing is I'm finding the two main parts of the bow, so the, you know, the big parts of the bow and I'm giving them some shape just by wrapping them around my bone folder. Obviously you can use a pencil or a felt tip or whatever you've got to hand. And then you put a tiny little bit of glue on and glue both of those so that they stay, you know, stuck to stuck to, to themselves. And then you actually stick the two together. So you've got your main part of your bow built. Before I stick them together, I'm giving my tails of my ribbon some shape. But there you go, I'm back at sticking the bow together now. So now you can see you've got the main part of the bow made. Hold that together for a while so it dries. Pop a little bit of glue on the back, which I'm just doing now. Now I actually squeeze a bit too much glue on there, so I'm just with a scrap of card scraping some of that off. And then pop on your ribbon tails. Hold that again just for a little while, just so it all dries. And then to finish off your bow, all you do is grab one of those little tiny rectangles there and wrap that over the middle. So you have to bend it round sort of the middle and then glue it at the back. And again, pop some glue on at the back and hold it for a while until it dries in place. And that's your bow done. Very, very simple. As I say, it's a Stampin' Up Bow Builder Punch and it's really simple and easy to use. The other little rectangle, or you can't see it there, but the other little rectangle you don't use, you end up discarding that, but you do just need one. So anyway, there's my bow done and I'm sticking it down on my card, just flat sticking it at the bottom of the wreath. Now I'm coming in with some gems, the same gems as I used on card one, and just popping um, little clusters of three gems into each of the flowers. And I'm alternating between large and small gems as I go around the flowers. Okay, so I quickly speed you up through that. And again, you don't have to have you know the exact same gems as I'm using here. These are very old gems. I don't even know if you can buy them anymore. But you could use just one larger gem or different coloured gems. Anything you want. This is just to add a little bit of sparkle to the card. And give them a push down. And now I've got to work on my sentiment. Now I grabbed from my collection this Avery Ale sentiment set. It's called Cake and Candles. And I want to use that happy birthday to you. And now I'm panicking a bit here because obviously I would like to have used my Misty, um, you know, to go down to make sure that I get a good impression from that stamp. But I can't because I've assembled the front of the card. I've got the bow on there and got all those flowers on there, so I can't do it. So I mount my, my sentiment onto my clear block give it a test stamp to make sure that it works. I'm happy with that and I go ahead and be brave and just literally stamp into the middle of the car or in the middle of the wreath. And that's a Stampin' Up ink in Night of Navy, which is the same as the cardstock that I'm using. Okay, so I was going to call my card finished there, but I'm actually looking at it and realise it looks a bit too plain. So what I do is I go and cut it on, cut the card base down and make that a smaller square. So it's a bit of a, a waste of a card blank, but it does end up looking nicer in the end. So now I've grabbed myself another card base, bone fold that, and then I'm going to cut my piece, of, cut myself a piece of the Knight of Navy cardstock just to back that on. And I think with this frame or this border, it looks a lot nicer. So I just stick everything together. Just flat stick that on there again, just using the Scotch ATG. And then flat stick the main part of the card on. Now obviously I can't turn over and put the Scotch on the back of that again because I don't want to squash that bow or the flowers. So I just have to put my tape down on the back and then stick that down. And then I'm 